Now for more on what is happening in Russia, Paulina Ivanova is a Russia correspondent for the Financial Times, along with Dmitry Alperovich, the former special advisor for the Defense Department, both Russia experts. Dmitry, let me start with you. You describe what we've seen from Vladimir Putin over the weekend and even in just the past few hours as an angry and scared leader right now. What exactly is he scared of? Well, he's scared of the fact that he has just seen the biggest challenge to his power in his entire presidency, the fact that for the first time really since 1941 when Hitler invaded Russia, you had hostile armored columns moving on Moscow, reaching within two hours of Moscow, completely unprecedented, and the fact that the Russian military, for whatever reason, was unable or unwilling to stop them is really uh, an incredible achievement by Prigozhin and something that Putin certainly did not expect. And he's angry because Putin values loyalty above all else. You can steal under him, you can kill, you can be uh, a criminal, but one thing you cannot be is disloyal. And the fact that Prigozhin challenged the system, even though he did not try to challenge Putin directly, Putin mm -hmm. certainly took it as a personal challenge, is very significant. So, Polina, given that, what I'm having trouble understanding is why the Kremlin, which has such strict control over state media, actually showed images of Prigozhin being cheered on by residents in Rostov over the weekend. They have effectively helped increase his visibility and his popularity by doing so. Trust me, they did not want um, anyone to see those images, but they don't have as much control over the situation at the moment as they would like to. Um, the events happened in Rostov. There was a lot of people. There were a lot of witnesses. Every one of those witnesses had um, had a phone, was able mm. to communicate what was going on. It was a very dramatic 24 hours, but also a very highly documented 24 hours with a lot of social media content from a lot of people who were who were experiencing it firsthand. And it was something that you couldn't, you know, brush under the carpet or conceal. So, Dimitri, where do you see things going? From here, Putin remains in power, but but what is the state of his power? You know, you and I were talking off air, and we were talking about previous leaders like Erdogan responding to attempted coups. And after that, in 2016, he was all over the airwaves and immediately clamped down on any opposition. We're not seeing that. Yeah, the big question of the entire weekend is where's Mr. Putin? Right? He had the one video that he put out uh, su Sunday morning announcing that Prigozhin is a traitor. Uh, of course, then it was re later reversed and uh, the uh, traders were no longer going to get crushed, but going to get amnesties and maybe exiled to Belarus. He just put out another video a few hours ago, uh, still being very angry, but uh, reaffirming the commitment not to prosecute people and to let them leave. Uh, really remarkable situation. There's no question that his power is now weakened. There's no question that a lot of people around the country, the elites, Various governors, various people in the social uh, in, in the security services are probably asking themselves if Prigozhin can really get away with this, with challenging state power like this. What can I get away with? And it's not that I think that Putin is about to be overturned in some sort of coup, but his power may be weakened so much that others around in the system may be making decisions, critical decisions about their own futures, about their own enrichment uh, of, of their own coffers and and uh, their own power without consulting with Putin, without getting permission from Putin. So you, you may have decentralization of power occurring in Russia over time. Paulina, it is very difficult to get a pulse on where Russians view uh, leadership and the true popularity of Vladimir Putin. We thought those numbers were uh, over 50 percent. And yet we didn't see that many people come out in support over the weekend. There was this air of indifference. Uh, in fact, maybe it was just people were shocked at how quickly things were transpiring. But what is the sense among Russians in terms of their continued support for Vladimir Putin? And are they open for any sort of change in leadership? I mean, people were definitely completely taken off guard. I mean, they caught completely off guard. Um, there was a high degree of anxiety just among ordinary people. Um, I was in touch with friends, relatives, um, as the column was approaching Moscow and there was a lot of anxiety about what could happen next and the instability that could happen. I mean, the last time Moscow experienced anything like that was 30 years ago, but that is still for a lot of people um, something in living memory. So um, 
there was definitely anxiety among elites. You could see this absence of decision making and really, um, for example, state uh, news anchor, one of the most kind of famous propagandists on Russian television, Margarita Simonyan, did not come out with any statement throughout all of Saturday, appearing, resurfacing effectively only you know, another 24 hours after, after the, coup, um, the coup attempt with a statement in support of, of the president and criticizing uh, Prigozhin and the, and the uprising. So there was a lot of, from the looks of it, you know, people trying to work out what was mm. going on and where best to align themselves. Yeah, Margarita Simonyon gave some excuse that she had been on vacation and uh, not very believable that she hadn't been following what was what was happening in the country. Dimitri, uh, finally to you, what will you be watching and paying closest attention to in the days and weeks to come? I think the critical question right now is what is going to happen to Prigozhin? Is he actually going to go into exile in Belarus? And by the way, if he does, is he going to preserve Wagner? Is Wagner going to go with him? Are they still going to be armed and supplied by the uh, Department of Defense, either in uh, Russia or maybe even in Belarus? And if that's the case, if he is not jailed, if he's not killed by Putin, that is going to send a signal to everyone that Putin is weaker than they thought, and you can get away with a lot. And that's going to mean, uh, you know, potential problems for him down the road. And again, I think a coup is unlikely. But one thing that I think is now a possibility, perhaps not a very likely possibility, but nevertheless a possibility, is that Putin doesn't actually run in elections next year. That perhaps yeah. there's a managed transition where some elites come to him and say, you know what, let's move on to the new generation. Step aside. We'll protect you. You keep your ill-gotten gains. You'll not be sent to the criminal court of justice in The Hague. Uh, but it's time for you to move on. That is fascinating to even hypothesize about, given that they just changed the laws that would have allowed him to effectively be uh, control of the country until 2036. Things are changing rapidly. And thank you both for your expertise in covering this for us, Polina Ivanova and Dmitry Alperovich. Thank you.